Greetings all, praise the King. Welcome to Eyewitness, an eye with an eye, where we reason to discover the truth, and we are an unscripted source of truth, supporting the struggle for international justice. So, we have our note card today uh, for this topic contains much information uh, that we do not choose to overlook. So therefore, to get the most comprehensive study, uh, we have some notes. Nevertheless, this is not script. Today's discussion is on the beast state. Because that's what it is. The beast is a state. Now what is a state? A state is a nation. There is no difference. When the scripture refers to this beast, It comes to make war against the king. And the king we know as the Christ, the Messiah. How did the Messiah come to be? You know, the prophecy is proclaimed the Messiah will come in the line of David of the tribe of Judea. And the Messiah would be a high priest, which was the tribe of Levi. And so the prophecy was fulfilled in that the Christ was of the, the blood and the law. So we know this law coming from Moses as the original law, the law that came before man's law. Now, you have this law, the little law, that which is not of the original law. And the first portion of the holy book is consisting of a book of laws. Some call the Torah, uh, some call uh, the Penti, the if I can pronounce that correctly. But nevertheless, these were the first five books. They were written by Moses, um, perhaps excluding Genesis, uh, but recognizably Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. And these books, having historical accounts, um, consisted primarily of law. And so law is most important to our faith, that we judge our faith based on how we act in accordance to God's law. In the ancient Ethiopian uh, law, um, the kings were required uh, to be held to higher standards, to follow uh, more stricter laws. Today's world, we know, is the opposite. Those that have the power have the freedoms that others don't. You know, they are what is called the world class. And it, as their name implies, um, they have the citizenship to most every state on the planet. This is a five tier system that they've designed in the sense that 
there's international law, there's national law, there's state law, there's uh, the county law, there's a city law, and then you have the companies which have their own rules. This is what governs over most people. Now, I say most because when you're born into the world, you have no knowledge of what is going on here. Um, you don't actually get presented with a piece of paper um, specifying what is happening. So there's nothing that you have signed up for. Therefore, you have the right to choose what, what law you decide to follow. If this doesn't mean anything to you, then perhaps this law is the one for you. Yet, if you think that there may be something wrong with this law, then you can also choose another form of law. Now, as far as I know, there's really only two forms of law. There's a civil law and there's a religious law. What they have is a civil law. And they can also give it other names such as common, which tells you in itself that this is designated for small people. When, um, you know, the, the, the royalties have a sovereignty over this common law. If you do some research, you'll find that there was different um, benches. There was a, there was a call in the, uh, the English, uh, after the medieval ages, what they called Renaissance or whatever, um, you know, you have different benches. So, you, you know, based on who it is to be heard, uh, you would have a, a, a different appointed judge or, or panel. Um, what binds these people is their oath. And similarly, at least in this this thing they call the United States of America, they have two different kinds of oaths. A common oath, the one that you see when people raise their hand and swear to tell the truth. And then they have an oath, which is a fraternal order that consists of their people, what they call the officers. This oath means more to them than this. This oath we have discovered means nothing. You know, and if you think about it, um, you'll discover that this is wrong. It's a form of a pagan tradition that somebody would actually place more uh, value in truth because they raise a hand. And, and, and believe me, you, you've got to raise a hand. You can't raise, they, they'll tell you that you have to raise the right hand, not the left. So this is superstitious. And if we can see that people have done this um, and lied, you know, but gained acceptance of trustworthiness from people because of this oath, then we know that this oath really functions um, in, in um, reverse of its intended purpose. Well, we say it like that because it's, we know the intention really is to give these, the officers more um, credibility by doing this. 
And nevertheless, it will, I guess in the eyes of some, function as you know, a, a, uh, a checkpoint, you know, that they will um, honor, you know, or they'll feel like it will be a curse. It's hard to see if this is, is really relevant to today as much as it was in the past. But certainly some people, when they raise their hand or when they put their hand on their heart, they really think it means something. Because they actually uh, place legitimacy in that which they are worshiping and serving. This is a form of worship. And the legitimacy, again, would be in what they call a government. Now, we've got to say it like that because, again, you have the choice to decide. Is this right? Is this wrong? If it's wrong, then you have to determine is this legitimate? You know, and, and that's up to you. Uh, Frederick Douglass says, you know, uh, supply conceives nothing without demand. Um, you know, you, you, you can't expect um, to have a, a structure standing if there's no support. How do they gain support? Well, they get people to raise their right hand. They get people to put their hand on the heart. They get people to cast the ballot. Um, they get people to say, you know, we are a part of this nation. They get people to say, we are American, for example. We are English, British, or we are whatever they call their, their state today. You know, the defining um, symbol of the state is the flag. So this is how you know you're being governed over by this body if it has a flag. You know, in this thing they call the United States, they have separate states. Every single one has a flag. And that is the nation that rules over you. They have their own set of laws. If you don't believe me, you know, try to tell them you're a citizen of the United States and you're protected by your Fourth Amendment or First Amendment. Um, they will tell you we have our own constitution that governs the process. But again, this is not something that we're acquainted with as we're raised from children. And to say the, the Pledge of the Allegiance doesn't add to it, hey, there's also states that are really the ones that will govern over you and they have their own um, underlying structures, the counties and the cities, which will do the same. Now, really, most people's uh, activities are influenced by the companies that they work for. So that takes care of most of any resistance that might come out. You see today, with the vaccine, the companies are firing people. So their government didn't have to come in and say, hey, you gotta take this or die. Um, you know, well, yeah, they did say that, didn't they? But they're not saying that, you know, we're going to mandate this, they're, ha they're having the companies do it. Um, this, is, this is important because you have to know that today's world functions far different than it used to in that you've got this privatization whereas the governments are, are awarding contracts to companies and they're basically all in it together. It's what you would call crony capitalism. You know, when you have, like, for example, the people that print the money, giving it to the largest corporations on the planet, um, that have already profited immensely. Um, now they're receiving capital, um, you know, is in, in, in the form of, of uh, a, a loan, uh, no interest loans and things. And this is all designed to increase 
and particular activities that those companies are engaged in. Uh, you know, you have this NASA, the space uh, department that's working with these private companies today. So they're going to all the research they developed, materials, uh, resources, connections um, are, are now um, given to these private companies who are, you know, uh, able to disguise or to conceal their operations. The idea behind a true government is something whereas people are aware of the inner workings. You know, it, you pay tax money, and you should expect to have some services, and you should expect to know what it is that you're giving your money to. What are they up to, let's say? But if you have private companies running the show, there's no requirement underneath their system of rule to uh, disclose information. Um, so if you're engaged in uh, monitoring human activities in live, you know, on live in a live format, you're 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 putting satellites in the sky, but you'd rather the people not be aware about this. So. You award the, the work to the private companies and you hide your operations. You get the same results. Now, another defining factor of this is their secrets. You know, as we just talked about with the privatization, the idea is to conceal the information. So the system that we're in is a system of secrets. You know, it, there's, it really amounts to anarchy because there's no difference between having no laws and having laws that no one knows. You know, and when you not only have secret laws, but you have so many laws that it's not one person could actually know what the system or how, how many... Uh, or what, what law, where law, what law is, then um, it's, there's, you tell me. Uh, when the laws are being interpreted, um, by the benefactors, you tell me what the difference is. You know, so the, the system, the laws are designed to be able to be manipulated. If they are, you know, benefiting this cause over here, you can, you can stretch them and, and squeeze them. And then if they're, um, you know, benefiting this cause, you can twist them and, and mend them. You know, it just is cuckoo. You know, in the scripture, the Holy Bible, like we spoke about, is a book of laws that are straightforward. Um, when you have the introduction of this English language, now you have designed a system of trickery. And that those that are able to master this are able to uh, fool the rest of the world, the populations. The players involved are the propagandists, the psychologists, and the politicians. The PPPs. So you could say the pro, the psi, and the poly. <clears throat> now, that's how those that work within this function. They function as propagandists because this is because this is a form of media. The media is connecting with people. 
it is to force thoughts on the people. And when you have a verdict, for example, in their court, it's entitled opinion of the court. Well, you could uh, rephrase that to say framing of the world class. You know, the court, world class, what they're involved in is depiction. or portrayals. They're looking to display people like such. Sometimes positively, if they're one of them. Now they're not going to come out and say, hey, this is one of us. Most likely the person will look like a rebel an oppositional figure. However, the result will benefit the world class. So if you have a case, for example, like David Koresh, where um, their system government military came into the compound and um, toppled it using tanks um, in, in, and caused the fire by um, knocking the wall down of the room that contained the arsenal. You know that the tanks were the reason why the fire was caused, but the framing is portraying this uh, leader, David Koresh, as being the um, instigator, the one that lit the fire. So just one small example. I mean, you could go on down the line and you can go from the verdicts to the newspapers, to the television, to the internet. And it, all it really amounts to is a portrayal. These generally will paint progress for themselves, the benefactors, You know, while attempting to destroy the reputations of those that are deemed to be adversarial to their cause. When you look at the bills, the laws, the, the little laws that are being introduced, um, you know that these people. are depicting the bill as being for just cause, yeah? But again, it's within the language and the interpretation is what the bill is really about. And the average person does not have the uh, capacity to determine what it is that this bill actually represents based on the language introduced. They're just not intelligent enough to get it really and, and you you could you could it doesn't matter you could take the most intelligent person and the, the bill could be interpreted differently as of then what they can see when you have these bills they function a lot like the newspaper headlines where is the title is very important almost the most important and because it's the first impression that the person gets of the story. So the same thing with their bills as they'll title them, you know, Freedom 1, 2, 3, but then you read, if you read it, you, you know, it says everybody get locked up on Saturday, you know. Um, it's normally it's become to the point where whatever the title says, the, 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 the truth is the exact opposite. But they've designed their system again where this is acceptable. You know, the the Patriot Act. We're gonna we're gonna go spy on everyone. It's acceptable. It's a it's a selling point. You know, those with the power function as the Pharisees of old. Um, 
they feel entitled to their positions because they think they've been anointed. And they've been anointed precisely because of this, this oath, this worshiping of their, their pagan gods. Now, these bells, as we've talked about, give them the tools to benefit while stripping the common people of their freedoms. Most of it's psychological. So if you can balance it out and show people, like for example, another world on the screen and, 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 and give them a moment to make pretend that they're not in the reality they're in, then what would be the difference? In other words, if you can convince people that you're honest and they believe you, then why would there be a need to not lie? That's kind of what they'd be thinking. Um, these folks are not neutral. And they work for the world class as we've discussed. Um, when you go into their uh, judicial industrial complex, you'll find that the people involved are getting paid by the same source. You know, like for example, in a courtroom, you have a judge, right? You have the, the attorneys the, for the state or for the defense. They're all being paid uh, by, the, by the state. So it's, you know, the old saying, don't, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Um, you know, why would anyone expect um, the the sa the cho the children of the same father uh, to you know stand uh, for another family. Now within that system, what they're goal is to is to get convictions the conviction to them is the you know check you're right um, you know this person was wrong it, it matters really little about what conviction is as long as they get a conviction you see um, they're not interested in the truth um, if they were interested in the truth then they would take every case to trial because then the most most information will be disclosed uh, but I think it's in the high 90 percent of of the cases end up in these what they call the plea bargain which was not administered um, previously back in the day back in the day from all of what I hear from those who experience um, you know they used to either have a trial or not so once they started to do these deals um, that became uh, their driving force uh, for revenue. Because that's what they function for, is for revenue. How, how could they not? You know, they, they, they depend on it. And what it is, is if we talked about the five-tier system. That top, the, the top institutional... complexes um, work directly with the uh, world classes and that will now provide incentives for those structures underneath them so there's money to be gained um, by playing by the rules if you don't uh, do what this next policy is for example then the funding will be pulled so that provides kind of the setup uh, for these organizations to move in the way they do. You know, these are associations. They're partners. You know, how, how it works when the money gets shifted around. Um, these folks get together in the back rooms. 
and they discuss, you know, what's beneficial to each other's cause. Um, once one judge or lawyer, for example, says, hey, I got a client, this guy's real important, Jeffrey Epstein, um, we need this to be taken care of, boom, boom, bang, associations. The money's shifted, but it's just shifted underneath the surface. It's not like back in the day, you know, envelope style. Um, and, 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 and a lot of this is um, like campaign um, contributions. So, you know, these folks get elected, for example, judges or whatever, those who represent the world class, and they're able to pocket money through this campaigning. Um, not only that, but they're able to um, do these kind of speeches, you know, after, you know, they've been elected um, and be paid by these crony capitalist companies. <clears throat> As we've stated, it's a judicial, industrial, complex. They're there to make money. They're there to gain power. They're there to pursue property. But maybe not for long. Uh, because we do have this artificial intelligence now coming in and doing the jobs that these players used to do, taking their jobs. Um, the, now these uh, court decisions are being made uh, based on this information uh, by the artificial intelligence, which is just a database that collects all the information, as much information as it can collect from as many devices as is out there. And then it is able to sort it out so that, you know, for example, you can search somebody's name and it could tell you, boom, this person's been here, here, here. They've talked to this person, this person. This what kind of personality this person's got. This where they work. This is their family. This what they're up to because they think they got some kind of predictive analysis. And they're using this on the youth now, I guess, going door to door. Uh, but this is the new world where um, the second beast is proclaimed in the Bible of Revelations. The, uh, the little beast, which is also known as the false prophet. The false prophet, because again, it's prophesy, prophesying, saying it can predict the future. You know, it's um, cast into the, the lake of fire. Now, it gives power to the first beast. And Babylon, which is the highest god of those people, um, being the city itself, that is what is developed with man's hands, if we think about the Tower of Babel, and trying to reach the heights to be able to monitor all the activity on the earth, is um, riding on this beast which is their, their little law. When we talked about this oath and how it's tied to this thing they call the Constitution. This Constitution is supposed to like take the place of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, they call it the Bill of Rights. They say it's the bedrock of their demo democracy. Say they say democracy, democracy. So that's the foundation. Any uh, true government um, must be built on a foundation to withstand, but it must be a solid foundation. Their foundation has remained intact because there's enough people that believe in it. You know, this artificial intelligence, it functions just as the privatization. Whereas it's able to uh, discount responsibility uh, from those that are involved in the process. You know, similarly how you'll hear like a judge sending someone say, I don't agree with this son, 
but that's minimum mandatory. Yeah. So it's a cop out. Now nobody has to be accountable anymore. People just hide behind their screens, push the buttons, boom, somebody gets blown up over here. You know, somebody gets locked up over here. Maybe somebody's convicted for something they didn't do. Boom. There's nobody to hold to account except for the the machine. You know, the false prophet. And Babylon tells us that they're going to tweak the device and make things better. You've got a prison workforce. You know, when they instituted this thing they called the 13th Amendment. Yeah, they, they made people uh, 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 slaves underneath their system that chose not to uh, follow the corrupt rule. Now this is a form of accept, acceptable involuntary servitude. And there's plenty of money to be made. We've talked about the betraying. You know, it's a, 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 a brand and stage. Or rather, a stage and brand uh, with their media. So, we've talked about you know, how they portray people, how they frame people. That's the stage. They're, the stage is not just what you see, but it's the setting thereof. It's not just the, the characters running around, it's also the backdrop. And they're looking to affect the way that people think about this particular issue, person, object. So it's a stage and brand operation. They use titling. We talked about the bills, we talked about the, the headlines. Um, if they can portray somebody as hating women, if they can portray somebody as a you know terrorist, if they can portray somebody as uh, you know calling themselves a sovereign citizen, you know stuff like that, then people believe it. Oh yeah, they, hey, why would this big newspaper say something about somebody if it wasn't true? It's that shock and awe. We've talked about the institutional model. You know, when the disciples went into town and saw the temple and marveled, you know, at the at the 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 magnificence of the structure and the Christ scolded them, you know. I would cast that down in three days. So you have this kind of shock and awe. When you've established yourself as the state, the crony capitalist connected to uh, the uh, communication channels, uh, you know, people are, 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 are willing to believe because the other thing is who else is out there, you know, for them to see? This is, this is the only people. This is the only state, like, for example, that you're governed under. This state, that nation. We've talked about the state, the uh, oppositional staging. Well, here's another example. The state and the nation pretend to be opposed to each other. Yeah. But you can use this vaccine, right, this coronavirus thing, to see that these people are not what they say they are. Um, they actually function for the same purpose, for the same goal. Um, but the idea is they want to portray a balance to paint progress, to make people think that it's just. Yeah, it's something that's that's um, worthy to be glorified and praised. You know the betrayals, like with the mug shots. You know this is propaganda. The last time this man was arrested, um, they used 
an old mug shop instead of the recent one. Why would they do that? Well, because the expression on my face was different. Um, when they get you up at 2 o'clock in the morning from your jail cell and tell you, oh, we think we got something on you, we need to get a picture of you, or whatever, you know, try to get you in a bad mood so that you show a certain face. That's the face that will end up on their internet, their internet. <clears throat> You know, w w with this artificial intelligence, and even before that, um, um, these people are able to profile so that they know who's who out there. And they know who's on their side, especially now, you know. This thing right here does it for them. You know, it's too hard. I think, you know, people do change their minds. You know, when they talk about the DNA, well, they say, well, the DNA changes. Well, whatever, whatever, that really is witchcraft. It's a form of um, soothsaying. But nevertheless, the DNA, if it really reflects who you are, then as you would begin to grow and become a different person, start to think differently, it would change, would it not? So they had to count for that. So, so they said, yeah, 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 DNA changes. But whatever, whatever. Without the DNA, these people still know what's going on. Um, with what most people are thinking because people choose to give them that information by feeding the beast. And when they feed the beast by giving it the man and um, engaging... In, in, in activities on their device, for example. Now it helps to form that profile of not only who they are, but others based on what they are just, you know, revealing for information. Because if you sign up, if you buy a device, like for example, a smartphone, it's going to have terms that are going to say anything that you say or anything that anyone says about you. Anything that anyone says about you. Um, you know, we can collect that information. So, you know, sometimes you think like, man, I wonder if that person liked me or if they're trying to play me or if, you know, whatever. You could be a kid and you could be wondering if a girl likes you. So you got the information. Now, you know who, what she said to her best friend about, you know, last night, whatever. You know what I'm saying? This is stuff that we were unable to know on our own, but yet the Babylon knows uh, because they've designed it this way. And that's why they tell us, we know more about you than you know about yourself. And that is partially true. You know, they are able to um, put together like juries based on this profiling. You know, they say, it's a jury of your peers no, it's a jury of their peers. And they determine who they choose to get on the jury based on this profiling. They know who, who, who the person is, what, who they work for, what color skin they got, and so on and so forth to today where they're able to pinpoint the personality traits. So when they're able to do their jury selections, um, they're able to choose people like they don't allow felons, convicted felons. So that's one way that they're discriminating against a group of people. And you know, when you do the selection process, you'll, you may find if there's a prospective jury member um, that does not think that the system or the structure of the courts or whatever is just, then that person be eliminated from possibility by the judge, by the judge. So if somebody says, you know, I'm not sure if cops are, are really honest, boom, the judge will get rid of them. They won't even allow you to have that person on jury. But if the same person said, I think cops are honest, they'll be able to stay.
another power that these um, folks have is to uh, trump or even falsify charges. You know, when this kind of thing happens, there's really not, not much anything you can do. You can sit there and try to convince um, a lawyer that, hey, you know, this is not true. Uh, but it's like, you know, yelling at a, a brick. Again, these, these lawyers, they work for the same body as the, the uh, persecuting, persecutorial agencies. So there's no incentive for them to help regardless of whether there's any evidence whatsoever. This is perhaps an error on their behalf, but you have to go through the motions to correct this. This ties into the secret, secret to see. Whereas, you know, you ha you're, you're expected to know how the process works, what kind of steps you have to take to be able to defend yourself, if, for, for example, if they falsify charges. And we found that they're able to actually they're able to actually uh, increase the penalty uh, to also not just falsify the charge but falsify the penalty. So if you look at a paper and it says you're being charged with an F1 felony one and you know it's punishable up to 20 years or something, best check that. Um, because it might not be an F1, it might be an F3. Um, so this is something else that they're able to do. That again, you, you know, there's nothing you could do about it unless you were able to go through the exact specific steps uh, to be able to uh, navigate the process to get to a, a desired outcome. Basically, this functions as an extortion racket by a group of highly paid bullies. They use intimidation and provocation uh, to get the results. Like, for example, uh, with the uh, pleas that we were talking about. If they decide that somebody is adversarial to their cause, instead of taking their life, you know, they can attempt to make the person go crazy by provocation, by intimidation, staking out the person. Everywhere the person goes, you've got another undercover with the glasses and, you know, a bandana. And... This is just, there's nothing that you can do about it. All right, where, where are you going to find a person? And you're going to go to and say, hey, the cops are following me around everywhere. They're harassing me. You see? Um, if you take a picture of these folks, you know, and we've got, we've got our evidence, um, they'll, they, they, you, you now are getting arrested. Like, first they were telling us, oh, yeah, we don't care about the cameras. The cameras don't bother us. Now the camera's coming out. Now people are getting arrested. And now they're saying, you know, people can't videotape the police no more because it's obstruction of justice. You see? Um, you know, you've got to wear a seatbelt because we care about your life. You know, these amount to bargaining tools, once they get you in that position, they can throw you in the corner. Your lawyer on one side, their lawyer on the other side, and they can, you know, breathe down your neck and spit in your face. And then you'll end up taking a plea. You cannot beat them at their own game. <laughs> you know, and the other thing is, if you were able to beat them, 
then you can expect a backlash. Um, these folks will be angry and they will use their power to do anything to destroy you. If you're able to um, you know, be awarded with justice. They are masters of, of deception when they do function in their official capacities. You know, when we talk about falsifying information, and you know, if you if something like this would happen to you, most people think, oh, that's that's great, man. That's, you know, that's a lawsuit, man. Go get a lawyer. You know, <laughs> it's like, um, you know, would you go into any store that you've never been before, yeah, and pick something up off the shelf that you've never seen before, yeah, and know that that product might be a food is going to be good, that you're going to like it, that you're going to want more. You know what I'm saying? Nobody could expect to go to a mechanic and say, I want my car, I need to get my car fixed. You know, you just moved into town, you don't know this person, you're hoping there's somebody honest, but you can never expect that you're going to get a good outcome. You know, they expect that you're going to just go find a lawyer and this person's going to be good for you. You know, you don't, it, 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 they're not cheap. You, don't, you can't just pick the lawyers up off the shelf and, you know, check the ingredients on them. You got to choose one, and that's all you got. And their system, although this is the most, this is the, uh, you know, event that may affect your life the most out of any, you got one choice on the shelf, baby. Pick one. Any, meeny, miny, mo. You know, so it becomes what it is in the scripture. It says that the saints will be weary. It's an exhausting process they put you through. They will drag their feet. And at the end, they'll say, now look, we like to get this over with. Go ahead and agree. Go ahead and agree. And really, that's what they have at the end of the day. From each and every one of us, they either have an agreement or they have a refusal. Yes or no. When they put people through their, their game, as we talk about the stage and brand. So sometimes the outcome is favorable for some people. This is when they're looking to push some kind of a social uh, outcome. They're looking to install a device. So they need to have a case that says, hey, if we can get these RFID devices installed in each and every car, it's going to save people's lives. Here's the case. You know what I'm saying? Or, for example, maybe somebody sues the company for installing the device, but it's a person, it's a staged opposition. So the person is not really, the outcome is not going to be that the device won't be able to install. The outcome they're going to rule in that the person, um, the, the company is lawful and installing the device against private company, right? Private company. Uh, people don't want this big government, so what they get is they get a bunch of big companies, you know, and the companies go on the television, they say whatever. I mean, if you have a state run media, you can still have all your private companies too, but you actually, your taxpayer act money actually goes to have a media company that's on the television. What's wrong with that? Is that communism, man? Oh, no. You know, you still have all your other choices, but at least you have a state company. The, the reason for that is because the public now has a say in what goes on. Even these companies that function, that's, that claim to be, you know, community-based and, you know, inclusive and whatnot, they're private companies. So they, at the end of the day, whether it be a radio station, television, whatever, it works for the world class. So the world class is really the only ones with the money anymore. Um, people think that you a hundred thousand dollars is money. You know, when when these people is printing up trillions of dollars years after years, this is not this, this is the crumb cakes. Uh, and the world class is knowing, but they've had people deceived into thinking 
there's hope on the way. Again, these social pushes happen when the staging is done. Um, using the objective, the person, um, to generate the desired outcome, which would be 